The focus of this video is writing a research proposal. We'll review what a research proposal is and the sections entailed. Research articles or manuscripts are similar to research proposals, but there's a key difference. A research article reports on work that was done, whereas a research proposal tells us what will be done. Both research articles and research proposals have an introduction that has the same focus. Both of these use the introduction to review previous research, which is then used to provide a rationale for the current hypothesis. Both the research article and the research proposal end their introduction with a clear statement of the hypothesis. Both papers also have a method section, but they're written a little bit differently. In a research article where we're reporting on research we have done, the method tells what was done, who were the participants, how were the variables measured, and uh, what was the procedure used. But in a research proposal, we are instead saying who we plan to collect data from, the measures we plan to use, and the procedures we plan to use. So the method section in a research proposal is written in future tense, whereas in a research article it's written in past tense because it's already been done. But the research proposal is where you're stating your plan of what you will do in order to test the hypothesis. Research articles are used to tell the public and tell the research community what we know, but research proposals are used to say what we want to know and our plan for going out to find that information. So research proposals are often written by researchers before their articles because this is their plan. And then they submit these to IRBs or funding agencies to get approval for ethically collecting data and to get funds to collect those data. So the purpose of the research proposal is to plan for what will eventually become a research article. So as noted, the method section in a research proposal is written in future tense. Research papers or manuscripts have a results section where we state what was found and whether it supported or refuted the hypothesis. But in a research proposal, no data are yet collected, so we cannot report on results and we cannot state whether or not the hypothesis has or has not been supported. Therefore, in a research proposal, we instead have a section called the analytic strategy. There is no results section. In the analytic strategy, we're stating what tests we will use to analyze the data. That is, we're saying what we're going to do statistically, right, to assess whether the hypothesis was supported or refuted. A results section is written in the past tense and is used to tell what was found. But in a research proposal, the analytic strategy is used and that states in future tense what we will do with the data we propose collecting. Each of these papers also has a discussion section. In a research article, the discussion is about the current findings and what those mean in light of the previous research that was noted in the introduction. Therefore, the discussion in a research article draws from and uses citations from the introduction and talks about how the current findings do or do not mirror what was found in other research and tries to give some context as to why, such as difference in method. The discussion of a research article also summarizes the limitations of the current study and suggests future directions for research. Now, the discussion in a research proposal is a little bit different. Here, we tell the strengths of the research design that is being proposed that cause it to warrant conducting the study. We also note any limitations to the design, that is, any limitations to the proposed method, uh, and why these are being selected. That is, if we say we're doing an experiment, one of the limitations might be the artificiality when we manipulate a variable, but the benefit for that, or the trade-off that we are uh, choosing, is that the experiment lets us assess cause-effect. So in a research proposal, I might state that yes, there are some drawbacks to using the experimental method, it's gonna have more cost involved, and we might have some artificiality because we're manipulating the independent variable, and that causes it to not necessarily be something that would be seen in the real world, because my manipulation may not be something the real world experiences. However, the trade-off is that I can now deduce whether there is a cause-effect relationship between the IV and DV. 
So the research article and the research proposal are structured very similarly. The key distinction is that a research article is mostly past tense and a research proposal is mostly future tense. The other key difference you'll note is that the research article tells what was found and a research proposal cannot do that. What it can tell us is what we will do to try to find something in the future. That is, the research proposal indicates our plan for testing the hypothesis in a way that has not been done in previous research. Both the research article and the research proposal should have multiple citations in their introduction and should have multiple corresponding references on the reference page. And both of these must be written in APA format. If you are proposing a simple experiment, you should have one independent variable and one dependent variable. The independent variable must be something you can manipulate, and the dependent variable must be something you can measure. The independent variable should be manipulated simply. That is, we shouldn't be involving actors or complex multiple scenarios in order to test our IV. For proposing a simple experiment, it's best to have just two levels of the IV, such as exposure to a condition and lack of exposure to a condition. The exposure happens for the experimental group, and the lack of it happens for the control group. Another way you can do a simple experiment with simple manipulation is to have everyone experience the IV twice, once with a manipulation and once without. However, I do recommend that when you're doing your first simple experimental proposal that you use two groups, a control and experimental group, because there are fewer limitations and issues that arise in this structure than when you use one group tested twice. If you're using simple manipulation of two separate groups, one control group and one experimental group, then the correct method to use for analyzing the data is going to be an independent samples t-test. Now your dependent variable must be something that can be measured and you must state in the measures section very clearly and overtly exactly how you would measure that dependent variable. So let's say that I was proposing an experiment where I wanted to know whether students who were or were not given gummy bears would get different scores on a quiz. I would have to detail exactly what would be on that quiz and show that it would be the exact same quiz given to both the experimental group and the control group and that the only difference between the two groups would be whether or not they received gummy bears. My experimental group would get the gummy bears and take the quiz and my control group would not get the gummy bears and they would take the exact same quiz. And then in my analytic strategy section, I would state I will use an independent samples t-test to compare the quiz scores of the control group and the experimental group. If I was hypothesizing that those who were given gummy bears would have higher quiz scores than those who were not given gummy bears, I would be using a one-tailed independent samples t-test. So when proposing our simple experiment, we want to do exactly as the name implies, and that is keep everything simple. Have one manipulation of your IV. Typically, I recommend having that uh, experienced by the experimental group versus the control group where the experimental group gets the IV and the control group has it withheld and have one clearly measurable dependent variable. If your IV is something you cannot manipulate, you are not doing an experiment. For example, I cannot do an experiment to see if gender impacts quiz scores because gender is not manipulable. I cannot control what someone's gender is, so I cannot do an experiment to see if gender causes anything because gender cannot be changed. And the dependent variable must be something we, that we can measure. For example, my dependent variable cannot be time travel because there is no known way to measure whether time travel exists. So I might have an interesting idea to see if folks who are better at guessing games are more able to travel through time than folks who are worse at guessing games, but I cannot measure your ability to time travel because as far as we can tell, you can't. So there's no way to actually measure this construct. So be sure that you're doing something realistic when you propose your simple experiment. 